Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor and welcome back to another exciting Linux First Impressions. This week we are looking at the Debian Unstable SID-based distribution from Germany. This is Seduction. <laughs> How y'all doing? Um, this is the first distribution review on my new laptop with all the headaches of EFI. Now, I don't know if it's just this new hardware that I'm still getting used to or if it's just an issue with UEFI and EFI, but it just seems to make things so much more difficult to get anything to work right. That being said, luckily I still have my old laptop and I may continue to just do my reviews on that since it has very much a lot of the same specs as this one without the headache and hassle of trying to deal with the bootloader and all that. Actually the bootloader isn't really the problem. And I'll continue to say this with most of my reviews. Refined, which is an application that I found as a boot manager, works excellent. Anybody who is looking to dual boot their systems with Linux, Windows, or anything else with EFI needs to look into Refined. With, with Refined, I don't have to worry about Grub. I don't have to worry about Lilo. It works very well. It gives me a very nice graphical user interface that I'm able to go right into and choose the operating system that I want to use and it just goes right in without any hassle. It works very well. Now that being said, Seduction is one of the first distributions, like I mentioned earlier, that works in EFI pretty much out of the box. I was able to install it refine detected it and then I was able to go ahead and test it and use it I didn't run into any of the video problems that I had run into while building Gen 2 it booted properly I was able to see the entire brute boot process I was able to get into the system worked very nicely the installation of seduction was a little mm, there are some parts of the installation I didn't care for. It made me a little nervous in certain areas when setting up some of the partitions and getting ready to install. But, you know, that's the hardest part of any distribution is making sure that you're doing your partitioning proper. If you're just putting this system onto a brand new system, or if you're putting this into VirtualBox, you're not going to run into the, some of the problems that I run into when dealing with installation and partitions and hard drives other than that though the installation went really smooth the boot media worked very well I've only been using seduction now for about a week or so and for the most part it's worked wonderful you know I did have to go ahead and use a new tool called HDA jack retask which I did mention in one of my last gen 2 reviews but I'll bring it back up here. If you're running the HGA Sound Intel drivers and you have a sophisticated system, this one for instance has the Beats audio, it has a subwoofer built into it, and by default when you play the sound it's very muted and the sound quality is not really there. But by, able, by being able to use HDA Jack Retask, and I'm going to bring that up right here, this tool here allows me to reassign some of the pins to the sound driver. So in this case, we select the codec, and we want, of course, the IDT92HD. And if we say show unconnected pins, you'll see that there are some that I've overridden. Internal speaker front side, pin ID 0x0F, and pin 0x10. This 
for my system resets the pin order for the sound so that this one here for instance goes to the subwoofer and this one and this one go to the internal speakers. By doing that, that increases the volume output of all my speakers by utilizing the proper speakers. It gives me that rich bass sound and suddenly I've got a much better audio experience coming out of my Linux distribution which really makes it feel better than hearing this itty bitty little tinny sound that you can barely hear. Now that's not a dysfunction of the distro. You know, that's just what I am finding is a problem with the way the HGA Sound Intel driver has been built and they whoever does the packaging for the kernel module for that or whoever is building modules for that specific driver needs to take into account some of this new hardware that utilizes that chipset but has many more speakers inside the system and even nowadays and who would ever imagine a subwoofer being built into a laptop it's there though yeah going on to the next thing that I found the video of course like I said looks wonderful works great if I do a GLX gears test out of the box not having to do anything else we are, should be getting about 60 frames per second which I found is about the best that I can get and you can see that yes that is coming up on an average of about 300 or so frames in five seconds or roughly 60 frames per second so you can see that that is working great there is one thing that I've been having trouble with and I don't know if it's seduction and the fact that it's running off of unstable codecs or or whatnot but I've noticed that when I go to YouTube and try to watch a video within seduction that I end up having issues with the flash player I also have issues though with flash within Gen 2 and have been having issues with flash within Gen 2 for a long time now it seems like it's hit and miss every once in a while when I click on a video whether or not it's going to play or if it's just going to give me some fuzzy screen that looks like static and state that this video is unavailable at this time. Now I know it has nothing to do with it being unavailable, it has to do with the flash plugin. I've tried different free, non-free flash plugins in all my different distributions and I'm running into the same problem. In fact, I've gotten to the point right now where I use a YouTube downloader and if I really want to watch it and I'm not near say the PS3 or the Xbox so I can just turn it on there and watch it I just download it using the YouTube download tool for Linux which works wonderful and then I can just watch it and then delete the video yeah it may take a little bit of time but with the bandwidth that I've got it seems to work really well and bypasses that whole internet interface with the flash I really wish we could come up with a better solution for that because I find myself inside YouTube more often than anywhere else. I mean, YouTube is actually, with the videos that I watch, is starting to overtake, well, definitely has already taken regular television. In fact, I'm getting ready to think about getting rid of the DVR and TV altogether because we hardly ever turn the television on. You know, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, they're taking over. And I prefer the on-demand entertainment when I want it, when, when I'm ready for it, instead of, oh, we have to wait till next week for the next episode, or, oh, gee, I forgot to tape last night's episode of Blah. Anyway, that is completely unrelated to Seduction and Linux, and I apologize for that ramble. We will try to get on to Seduction. As I mentioned, Seduction is based on the unstable branch of Debian, thus I believe that's Sid which is why I believe they also named their distribution Seduction. One other thing, when I first logged in, and it's, uh, this, this is a very chilly background. This is the default background here. Boy, it makes me feel cold even out here in Arizona where it should be in the 70s right now in January. But there were some things that I ran into problems with, and luckily they had the Seduction, the, their manual right here and I was able to go right into that pull it up and 
start looking for answers. They have a great wiki, a great forums, everything that you'd need to know or think about is all right here. And this helped me out in those few of those little areas. And they're nothing really major to discuss. I think I just, when I first got it running, was missing a few tools and needed to figure out how to get those few tools working. If I remember right, I don't think it had a GUI install manager installed. And so I did have to install uh, one for myself. Synaptics, I think, is one of the ones that I've used a lot lately for Debian-based distributions. And so I did have to install that. But their media here was very good, very informative, helped out a lot. So if you're looking for a distribution that will work booting using refined and also on an EFI system seduction is one of those to try out and look at I have looked at a lot of different distributions recently since I've gotten my new laptop since Christmas trying out different systems and what I found is if it's a 32-bit system I've had no luck whatsoever getting it to work in EFI I've had to make sure it's 64-bit. I've had to make sure that it's it's built with sometimes that EFI stub or the EFI frame buffer into the kernel. That, that means, for instance, I really enjoyed reviewing Makulu a few weeks ago on my old system. And I went to check out Makulu 4.1 because it just came out at the beginning of the year. And unfortunately, because it's a 32-bit, I'm, I'm assuming it's because it's 32-bit, Refined doesn't detect uh, the kernel in Makulu at all, and I, and therefore I cannot. I can install it. I can even use the live boot media, and that's the thing. I can use live boot media pretty much in everything using legacy EFI boot. All those sort of things will boot nicely, but once I've installed it and then I go to use Refined, most of the distributions I've looked at aren't detected any longer. I don't know if that's just an issue with EFI or or what exactly. I'm still learning a lot about it. My Gen 2 based system is getting much more robust. I've gotten so many things resolved in that. I just wish I could automate that issue with the HGA um, jack retask. As you saw there, within Seduction, I was able to actually just do all that and it works. No logging out, log no logging in no releasing the module and renewing the module within gen 2 though I have to release renew restart do some things and then tweak it it takes I've gotten the task down to about two or three minutes but still I wish I could just automate it turn it on and make it work just like that someday someday you know gen 2 is a wonderful distribution though allows you to really get in there and work with it but Linux in general I have always found because I've worked with it for over a decade now and I have found that while it can be the coolest OS ever whenever something new like EFI comes out you gotta wait a while for everybody to catch up and it takes a bit of time and I'm sure in, in another six months to a year from now will have distributions that have cleanly built their kernels great wikis out there how to make distributions you have to do from scratch like Gen 2 or Arch and and we'll be able to resolve a lot of the problems and we won't even worry about what we're, what I'm dealing with now that's the good thing about Linux in general we have such a wonderful community of developers out there that do an excellent job of fixing things up so if you've got a new computer, a new laptop that uses EFI and you want to test out a lighter version, something other than say Fedora that, that supports EFI, then try out Seduction. Look at it. It is on the distro watch. Easy to find right here. They do come in GNOME, KDE, LXDE, and Razer QT and XFCE. So you have many choices on the desktop environment. So if KDE isn't your flavor or your GUI of choice, you can choose something else. And the live medium, like I said, works great right out of the box. 
So whether it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for struggling through with me with my Gen 2 review videos for the last two weeks of me learning to get Gen 2 working on a new machine. You know, any other machine without EFI, I would have had that up and running in 24 hours. And it took me about a, it took me about three to five days, closer to the three or four day probably, to get it all running proper with just a few bugs. So that's not too bad. I'm just not crazy about EFI, and I really wish there was a way you could reverse the boot priority in the BIOS so that legacy boot would supersede EFI boot, and that would really resolve probably 99% of the hassles that EFI causes. But like I said, another six months to a year, Linux will have that worked out. I'm sure of it. <laughs> So y'all have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye.